What's up everyone, Soldier First Class here in today's mission. We're going to discuss how the weapon fights could work in Final Fantasy VII Remake. There's a few theories I have, so stay tuned soldiers, it's time for our next mission. Before we begin, I'd like to give a special shout out to Victor Fernandez for allowing me to use his ultimate weapon piece for the video's thumbnail. I'll leave a link to his art station page where you can browse his entire portfolio, including these amazing images of Ruby and Emerald Weapon. Ruby and Emerald Weapon are two of the toughest and most famous super bosses in Final Fantasy history. Their power is legendary and their fights are frustrating, but it begs the question, how will they work in Final Fantasy VII Remake? With the new action style and more realistic look, how will Cloud and the party be able to take on these colossal powerhouses? Keep in mind, these aren't the first large scale enemies we've seen in action-based Final Fantasy games. Final Fantasy XV featured several fights, especially ones involving summons that were large in scale. While I know that combat circumstances were a little different and we won't have access to warp striking, the concept could still be the same. Adamantoise was by far the largest enemy in the entire game, and granted the fight took an hour minimum, but it was still able to be done. It was a lot of slashing the base of the enemy, but involving summons gave some crazy things to witness. I could see this being similar to how it's handled in the remake. There's a theory I have, and it involves the fight being in multiple stages. This combines a lot of elements in the game into one idea. We could start the fight with Ruby while it's still in the ground. In the original game, Ruby was found in the desert outside of the Gold Saucer. Once you touched Ruby, it jumps out of the ground and the battle begins. We could see this fight start out with Ruby being in the ground, the party thinking that it's just an underground enemy with tentacles. Then once the party does enough damage, a cutscene plays where you take to the skies in the high wind and the real fight with Ruby Weapon begins. The airship could come into play and was used for large scale enemies in Final Fantasy X and I could see the high wind being used in a similar fashion. Evray was fought up close and personal with the airship capable of moving in and out of close quarters. When in close quarters, it was ideal for characters like Titus and Orin. When in range, Waka and Lulu excelled. It also featured missiles that Sid fired at the command of the player. We also know that the Highwind has attack capabilities due to it being involved with Sid's Limit Break Highwind. It rains down 18 missiles on your enemy, dealing massive damage. This could easily be written into the context of the Ruby Weapon fight. Do enough damage, open up a weak spot, and then the High Wind unleashes Hell on Ruby Weapon. This would fall in line with the remake's command system, as it would be added to your command menu, much like how summons work now. We also know that Ultimate Weapon was fought on the deck of the High Wind in the original, so it's not outside of the airship's capabilities. Then there's the Emerald Weapon, and this one is a little harder to come up with. By its nature, being underwater poses a lot of development issues. Do the characters stand flat on the ocean floor like they do in the original, or do they swim around? I think the first thing that we'll see is them making use of the underwater materia in some way as part of the quest. In the original, it took away the timer for the battle and made the battle last as long as you did. We'll likely see the party making sure they have it equipped, allowing them to breathe underwater. I also believe the submarine will come into play as well. Much like the high wind scenario we discussed before, we know the submarine has attack capabilities. There's a whole story segment and minigame dedicated to it. The party could use the submarine in a similar fashion, attacking Emerald Weapon as either a distraction or as a massive damage dealer. Then there's the Ultimate Weapon, which is part of the main story, but also gives you Cloud's best weapon, the Ultima Weapon. The fight itself was optional, but was definitely worth your time to complete. To fight Ultimate Weapon, you had to keep ramming him with the High Wind until he finally stopped above Cosmo Canyon. This fight took place on the deck of the High Wind and functioned similar to Final Fantasy X's Every Fight, minus the High Wind attack capability. Defeating Ultimate Weapon not only gave Cloud his strongest weapon, it also unlocked the ability to fight Ruby Weapon, and I could see this remaining the same in the remake. I also have a theory that they won't just be encounters you can seek out, and I think we'll actually have dedicated quest lines for these fights. In Final Fantasy XV, the Adamantoids showed up post-game and was part of an actual quest. I also think we'll be getting more lore behind them as well. I don't think the they were created as the planet's defense fun fact is going to be the only thing surrounding these products of Gaia. I want to see their lore expanded, especially since they're such a memorable part of the original game. Keep in mind, until recent ports, people in Japan had never fought Ruby and Emerald Weapon because they didn't exist in that version. The original Japanese version instead had a higher random encounter rate. This might be the first time that a lot of people are going to fight these titans. I also hope they make the rewards for defeating them a little more important. By the time you defeat Ruby Weapon, you likely already had a gold chocobo and knights of the round, so they kind of felt pointless. And for those that think the weapons may not make it into the remake, they're a major part of the lore of the planet and have to be included. The summoning of Meteor unleashes their power, and they're the planet's last defense against danger. The weapons are still extremely popular amongst a majority of the fan base, and these enemies have to be in the game in some capacity. Overall, I know we won't know anything until the last part of the remake, but these are just some theories on how they could handle the weapon fights. The fights will no doubt be massive and difficult, but I'm sure it will be worth it in the end. So what do you think, soldiers? Do these theories sound reasonable, or do you have your own theories on how these battles will be handled?
Thanks for watching, and don't forget to omni slash that like button. Let me know in the comments section below how you think the weapon fights will work in Final Fantasy VII Remake. Subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell to join the ranks of Soldier today. And for all the latest Final Fantasy VII Remake news, rumors, and trailers, I'm Soldier First Class, and I'm on to the next mission. Later, guys.